Do here's a clap. Do 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 Give this another shot. What do you say? <laughs> Hi, everybody, this is Big Anklevich coming at you again with another episode of the Ankle Cast. Trying to merge onto the freeway here without being killed. And there's a large truck coming up behind me with a bumper that looks like it can kill something from Mad Max. Okay. So, uh, I've tried to do this episode several times and I've either been uh, unsatisfied with it or had technical difficulties with it. So uh, here we are again, trying another time. Um, Some heavy talk, part two. Uh, Trying to remember exactly where I left off the last one. You probably don't remember where I left off the last one either. So I suppose it probably doesn't really matter. But I think that I was talking about how uh, I was going to stop drinking diet soda and see what that did for my uh, weight loss progress. And so I did it. It was tough. And I I think what I did was I gave myself uh, basically what I did was if I didn't drink soda, which I would have spent money on then I got to save that money and use it for something else. And I beefed up my book collection by doing that. I said, okay, every uh, week I go without drinking soda, I can buy a book, which truthfully, that's probably cheaper than what I used to spend on soda because I have a tendency to buy the soda at the gas station when it's cold so that I can just drink it right then. And because of that it's like almost it's like two bucks a bottle and I would I would probably do at least two bottles a day for the most part because uh, it was the only sweet that I got to have and I really wanted it and uh, so when I gave myself this um, this this, uh, incentive then I was able to not drink it and instead get myself stuff. Like I've managed to get all the uh, Expanse books that I didn't have yet. Um, that was cool. And I got a bunch of uh, other books like the uh, The Old Man's War trilogy. Well, shoot, it's more than a trilogy at this point, but I don't know how many of them I have. I'd have to go back and look. Uh, But also while doing this, I managed to lose a bunch of weight. My weight loss, I think I'd said that I'd lost like 12 pounds in the first few months, which wasn't really all that much. It was like three months I'd lost 12 pounds. Um, But when I stopped with the soda then I started to lose it much faster. And I think I lost probably like 20 pounds over the next two or three months, maybe even 30, goodness. I was, I, I had lost all the way to 40 pounds. Uh, I was at 267 by the time I went on vacation in the middle of the summer, like the end of June. I had come all the way down to 267, from 307 down to 267 um, by doing this. Now, 
it was it, it's wonderful and the, the funny thing about it is I finally feel like I know what I'm doing you know what I mean uh, I used to think that I knew what I was doing but I would never get any results and I've watched a whole bunch of uh, doctors I think I said that last time I even had uh, Sarah Hallberg quotes peppered in to the uh, podcast. Um, I've watched her and a bunch of other doctors talk about what they've learned, basically, about how our body works recently. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay it on you. Now, I'm not a doctor. I think I said that last time around. If you didn't know that, I don't, I'm not, I've only learned from watching doctors talk. And I would suggest, if you are overweight or obese, or have health problems like diabetes, because um, you don't have to be obese to have type 2 diabetes. Uh, it's, it's not actually a, a thing that comes only with obesity, it turns out. Um, so if you're one of those people, I would suggest looking into it. Okay, you're going you're gonna to get a lot of scare tactics thrown your way because uh, some people's livelihoods depend on us uh, staying fat and staying sick. And uh, they're not just going to let that livelihood go away. But there are still... Uh, scrupulous people out there. <laughs> There's still scientists that um, will do studies that aren't biased to get a certain result because they're being paid for by, I don't know, Kraft Foods or some crap like that. So this is what I've learned and it's changed my life tremendously. Um... So, the stuff that they've been telling us our whole life, uh, they, they have taken biology and tried to call it physics, and said, hey, listen, the, there's the, uh, what do they say, the first law of thermodynamics? You know, you can't take something out of a system, you know, if you're going to lose weight, you know, you, it, it always equals out, the energy and the, and the mass and all that kind of stuff. Um, so they say a calorie in, a calorie out kind of uh, method of losing weight, right? Calorie is a calorie, they say. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Calorie is a calorie. And you lose weight by eating less calories than you expend through your daily life. Um, so basically they tell you to eat less and exercise more. And that will change your energy balance around and you will start burning uh, burning away all that fat and you'll get back down to being a skinny healthy person. Now we've had that model for losing weight for what? 50 years at least? they've been telling us that, probably more. Um, and how has it worked? How are things going? Are people getting skinnier because they know how to do it? No, it turns out they're not. It turns out that it's not working well at all. It turns out that it pretty much, uh, I mean, it, it'll work for a little while. Uh, if you seriously ramp down your calories, you will lose weight for a while, but what will happen is this complex biological system that is your body will adjust, okay? So if you ramp down your calories to a lower level, then your body will eventually go, you know what, there's not enough nutrients in the environment out there right now for us to survive and so it will adjust its energy output down 
to what the energy input is. So uh, now your metabolism has slowed. And what's worse is it's harder to get your metabolism to go back up. So often you will do what they call yo-yo diet. You'll lose weight and then your metabolism comes down. And because your metabolism comes down, uh, you stop losing weight. And eventually, too, you know, uh, eating really few calories is hard. And so you'll, you'll cheat. And then maybe you'll just go off that diet. When you go off that diet, your metabolism is still low. And so immediately you'll pack those pounds right back on. And often worse because your metabolism is now slowed. So you'll pack on more pounds and then you know they'll come another day when you do the diet again you'll lose some weight it'll be harder it'll be harder to lose that weight and then your body will bring down the metabolism again because your body is a biological system it's complex all sorts of things have evolved over the millennia to keep uh, human beings surviving through things like famines and droughts and so forth because I mean it happens it happens all the time um, now as we've progressed through the millennia and got our technology and our progress and whatnot we've managed to find a way to uh, mitigate some of those problems so we don't have very much shortage and that's I think the main reason why we're getting fat is because we don't need these complex uh, things in our body anymore to keep us from dying. You know, we, we get plenty of calories coming in. We don't need to be saved by lowering our metabolism. But it doesn't matter. It's not like you can just go in and reprogram your biology. It's not a freaking computer code that you can just, you know, tap a tap a tap a on your keyboard and fix and you know remove that section instead our body just keeps doing that um, so the calories in calories out idea is not effective all you're gonna do is lower your metabolism so that you're tired all the time and you're still fat um, so basically this is the the key the things the thing that they have learned recently is that it's not a calorie in calorie out it's not a calorie is a calorie uh, your body reacts differently to different types of food different calories uh, there's no way that you can tell me that your body reacts the same way to a donut a hundred calories we'll say of donuts as it does to a hundred calories of broccoli it will react differently to each one of those things and the way it reacts is it puts out hormones that tells your body to do certain things okay now with your different macronutrients uh, that exist out there you have the carbohydrates you have the proteins you have the fats and your body reacts differently to each one of these things um, it puts out certain hormones that tells your body how to uh, proceed how to digest these things now carbohydrates are uh, high energy kind of things you uh, when you eat them your body puts out a lot of insulin insulin is the the absolute key to dealing with your weight uh, to getting your body into the shape that you need it to be so you want to keep your insulin as low as you can because what insulin does your body makes insulin when you eat carbohydrates because your body is saying okay let's use this sugar that's in the blood now to uh, power ourselves um, so the sugar that's flowing through your blood, your cells will open up because of the insulin. They'll take in that uh, sugar and they will power themselves with that. And whatever's left over 
after you know the cells get what they need your body will take that and make fat for later you know it saves some for later it's it's, uh, it's saving for its seconds <laughs> i don't know anyways it's uh, that's our way of dealing with the possibility of there being uh, shortages in the, in the future we save stuff when we can and then when there's nothing to uh, to be eaten then that's when we start using the fat so the key is keeping your insulin low and I talked about the ketogenic diet in, in the last uh, podcast and the other thing that I would talk about is something called intermittent fasting. So ketogenic diet, first of all, is a diet that is uh, made to keep your insulin as low as possible. Because depending on what you eat, uh, carbohydrate raises your insulin the most. Protein raises your insulin some. Fats raise your insulin the least. So, uh, the ketogenic diet is made to, to, to get that insulin down. You eat as little carbohydrates as possible so that um, your insulin stays low. Because when your insulin stays low, uh, your body will use your own fat, the fat that's on your you know, hanging off your, your gut, packed in around your organs. <laughs> it will use that fat to power itself. And that's what we all want to get rid of, right? I mean, anybody who's overweight wants to get rid of uh, the fat. They don't want to, like, burn off their muscles. They don't want to burn off their bones. I don't know. They don't want to just lose weight. You want to lose fat because fat is the thing that's really causing the problem. It's not weight. Weight is just kind of a way of saying it. So that's what the ketogenic diet is for. Now, if you want to take it a little further, um, there's no way to get lower than zero, right? So if you really want to lower your insulin, uh, fasting is the best way to go about it. Uh, I've become acquainted with a doctor named Jason Fung, who is probably the biggest proponent of uh, something that's called intermittent fasting. And that just basically means you go without food uh, for certain periods. Um, Everybody goes without food. Everybody intermittent fasts a little bit because everybody goes to bed at night and then doesn't eat until they wake up in the morning. Go whole eight hours at least without eating. And nobody dies. Nobody has problems. It's not a a big whoop. Um, We all do it. Basically what the idea is behind intermittent fasting is that you extend that window a little further uh, so that you eat, and there's different ways to do it. Uh, some plans have you doing, you know, going out for food for a whole day, but then eating like, you know, a couple days regular in between, and then going without food. So you fast on an intermittent basis. Other ways of doing it is like one meal a day, where you eat one great big meal, and then you fast the whole rest of the time. And the idea is by doing this, that you you still, when it comes down to it, you're eating the same amount of calories or close to it. You're not really lowering your calories much, but you're bringing your insulin down a lot because you go for so long without having food that, uh, you know, you say you eat for, I don't know, you have a window of eating that's two hours long and then you don't eat for 22 hours, so you have low insulin all of that time. And your body uses the calories that you ate, and then it starts using the fat that you have on your body 
to keep you going for the rest of the time. And that is a great way to lose weight, to lose it well, to lose, sorry, to lose fat, we'll say, not lose weight. You lose the stuff that you most need to lose. And on top of that, there's a bunch of other health benefits that go with it. Um, so anyways, that's, that's it. Let me, let me just say, anybody that's listening, just check it out. You know, you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways you can do it. If you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you can still do it. You don't have to eat fat from animals, if that's a thing that you're against. Um, but just look into it. See if you can, uh, you know, learn a little bit about it and, and check it out. Because truthfully, I think that it, this is the thing that will save the world. Our world is dying there uh, we have like i don't know 50 it's, it's like at least 50 percent of the united states for example is diabetic or pre-diabetic i think it's even worse than that i think it's like 50 percent freaking diabetic and even more are pre-diabetic i don't remember exactly what the uh, numbers are but it's insanely bad news out there and the reason why is because We've got the wrong information on how to live. We don't, we've been led down the wrong path and it's doing the exact opposite of what we want. They came up with the dietary guidelines and the heart healthy uh, diet uh, back in the 70s, 60s and 70s they put out the guidelines in the, in the 80s and immediately afterwards obesity, diabetes uh, and all sorts of other uh, diseases started rising you can go and look at the graphs they're out there and they'll show you and it should be pretty obvious that we were doing something wrong when you see those graphs and it shows you where everyone is headed. We all just need to get back to the way we used to eat uh, before we were told we needed to eat another way to avoid heart attacks. Um, and you know, I just, I feel like um, I got lucky and found out about this stuff before I was diabetic for too long. And I think I may have managed to save myself may manage to save my feet, to save my eyes, you know, the things that diabetes tends to destroy, I think I may be found out about the truth soon enough that I can save myself. Um, and I would just like everybody else to be able to do so as well. Uh, I went and saw my doctor just recently. I, I talked about my, my first appointment with him on the last podcast. Uh, this was my second appointment with him after another three months past the, the other one. I needed tests on me again. And this time when I went in there, he took a look at my tests. And yeah, he was... He was pretty blown away. He, he saw that I'd lost a whole bunch more weight, which he was impressed with. He saw that my A1C, which is the score that uh, tells you how bad your blood sugar has been for three months, um, my A1C had come down even further. I told you last time around that, okay, so there's the range that a A1C score can fall in, 6.5 and above is diabetic. 5.8 to 6.5 is pre-diabetic. No, 5.7, sorry. 5.7 to 6.5 is pre-diabetic. And then 5.6 and below is non-diabetic. Now, last time around, I thought my score was at 5.8, but my doctor said no, it was 5.6. 
So I was actually already out of diabetic range. And now, this last time that I went, it is 5.2. So I'm not even close any longer. And I'm hoping that somehow I can get down into the four range. I don't, I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> I don't even know really where the levels are supposed to go. But if I can get all the way to 5.2, can I get to 4.9 or something? Is that, a, is that a possibility? I don't know, but I want to try it. Um, and it's all because I've changed my diet and getting that insulin down. And uh, the, the great thing about ketogenic diet that I mentioned in the last time, you eat fat, fat is filling. It fills you up. You don't feel all that hungry. Uh, if you switch to intermittent fasting with a ketogenic diet because you're, uh, you know, you eat all that fat and the fat keeps you full. Um, if you do decide to go to uh, like one meal a day or something like that, like I did, I would just suggest taking it slow. Uh, I started by going down to two meals a day and then steadily shrinking the window down that I ate in so you know I had to have a uh, lunch at noon and dinner at six and then I started trying to make it no I'd have lunch at one and dinner at six and then lunch at two and dinner at six and eventually I finally just said okay I'm just not having dinner and I had my lunch and that was it and I was afraid I'll tell you I went to work with no food and I thought ah, I just hope I don't have to go out and buy something I can't stand it, but I could stand it, it turns out. It's not really that difficult. And, um, and it's super healthy. Uh, I know the, it, it might sound scary, it might sound uh, uncomfortable. It's not as bad as you might think when you change your diet. Uh, you know, not having food is not that big of a deal. You know, it used to be something that we did all the time. You know, you, you all probably remember your parents saying, don't eat anything, you'll spoil your dinner. Don't have that snack, you'll spoil your dinner. And we didn't, you know, when we were kids, when I was a kid anyways, I don't know how old you are, maybe you're still a kid that's listening, who knows. But when I was a kid, you know, we didn't have as many snacks as they do now. Hell, my kid, now they insist that I send my kid a snack to school. So he has lunch, but he has to have a snack in between breakfast and lunch. He can't just wait till lunch. Like that's too long for someone to go without eating. Uh, and I think it's a shame, man. We're creating a crap ton of obese kids because we won't even let them go four or five hours without eating. Uh, that's something that this process has uh, made me realize. My kid's really skinny right now. And I've realized I need to let him eat when he wants to eat. I'm not going to be that person that's like, you need to eat breakfast. And he says, nah, I'm not hungry. Nah, I don't care. Eat it. Eat some cookie crunch. Is that what it was called? Cookie crisp? Cookie. I think it was cookie crisp. Whatever that cereal, you know. The only cereal that's double frosted and dipped in chocolate. <laughs> Cowboy Crunchies. Uh, yeah, we, we need to learn to let people not eat. Nobody's going to die. We're all so damn fat. We got so much food, so much energy just hanging off of us, waiting to be used. And we never, ever, ever, ever use it. We're so afraid to use this energy that we've been saving up all this time. Why are we saving it if we won't use it? But yeah, if you have any questions, uh, ask me. Uh, you can DM on Facebook or whatever. You can comment on this podcast. Um, yeah, I just wanted, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of really passionate about this right now, and I just wanted to get the word out. I'm like a 
a, a born again that just has to tell everybody about Jesus, except for in my case, it's about uh, the truth about how to eat. Um, and you know, you can take it or leave it, just like <laughs> just like you can with Jesus and the born again. Uh, you don't have to uh, to care, but I want people to know because I think that this knowledge could save a lot of lives and save a lot of pain and make a lot of lives better. It's much easier to get along throughout your day when you have, I don't know, 60, 100 pounds less to carry around with you. If you ever held a backpack with 100 pounds in it, it's friggin' heavy. I carry that much fat around every day. So I'll be glad to get rid of that. I'm sure my joints, my knees and back and all that kind of stuff will be so glad when it's gone. Um, and I'm working on that. It's going to take a long time. It's going to take probably a year for it all to come off. And that's <laughs> depending on how faithful I am uh, with the diet. still have issues with that damn soda. And the soda, be it diet or not, brings up the uh, insulin. Um... Anyway, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, I will be back again. I've got a couple more podcasts in the works planned, uh, including one that Rish has been hounding me about. So uh, I will probably have to do that one soon before he forces me. He, he's already saying that he's going to force me to... Um, to do it with him if I don't do it without him so we'll see ya. maybe there'll be a rich outcast with him in it anyways or sorry rich outcast a big ankle bitch cast an ankle cast with rich outfield in it all right anyways I'll talk to you later folks thanks for watching see ya Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. Your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. Do it! Do it! You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take the shot. There will always be things in the way you dream. Don't let your dreams be dreams. You go out and you find why not. You surround yourself with why not. Live a why not life, man. There are a million no's, but all you need is one yes. Where we are today is where we are. Today's the starting day. I know what we're gonna do today. Just do it! Do it! And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. That's all it takes to be successful is an attitude. It's an awesome feeling when you truly believe that you're going to be successful. Nothing is impossible! Dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle! Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye!